Now we're going to look at one more example here to try to find a composite function. This time it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but the concepts are going to be pretty similar. So to find the f of g of x, again, it's very important that you understand that you're plugging your g function into your f function. So that's what f of g of x means. We're going to take our g function and plug it into our f. Our g function is given to us, as you can see, as this right here, 2 over x. So when we find f of g of x, we're really going to find f of 2 over x, because that is what our uh, g function represents. So we're going to take that value, we're going to plug it into our f function. When we do this, uh, we're going to take out all of the x's and replace 2 over x into our problem. So 2 over x minus 1 in our denominator divided into 2. Now just a little review, because we've done this before, it's a complex fraction, so what I've got to do is turn this into a common denominator, get one term on the top and one term on the bottom. So my common denominator, what I will want to get is x. So instead of using 1, I'll use x over x. Now I can combine those two things, so I'll get 2 over 2 minus x over x. And then instead of trying to divide those two things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll have 2 times x over 2 minus x. So if I could factor anything and cancel it, I would, but as you can see, nothing's factorable and I can't do anything. So I'm going to multiply my numerators together and multiply my denominators together, and that will give me my value for f of g of x. So again, the math is just a little bit more difficult because we are using uh, complex fractions in a problem like this. And then what also is going to be a little bit more uh, difficult is our domain. So normally we have all real numbers in, unless we have some uh, some uh, values that will limit our domain, which are variables in the denominator or variables in the radical. So to find the domain of a composite function, you're actually going to look at two things. You're going to look at what you plugged in, which in this case for us is going to be g of x. So if you look at g of x, as you can see, uh, if we plug in 0 for x, that's going to limit our domain. So one value we can't use, x cannot be equal to 0, because when plugged in right here, it will make us divide by 0. And you can see that in our problem, and our composite function is going to be right there. And then what we're actually looking for is our answer. So we look at our final answer, and we figure out what will limit our domain in this. And the value for x that will make the denominator equal to 0 in that one will be x cannot be equal to 2. So our domain for this problem, what we'll have is we'll have from negative infinity to 0, and then from 0 to 2, and then from 2 to infinity.